Uh, anyways, I'm a 23-year-old woman from London, and I love your podcast. Oh, thank you. I'm crushing it with the 23-year-old ladies this week. Uh, you always say you want to hear from more of us ladies. I do, because it gets too one- one-sided. So here I am. I would love your advice on my current situation. My parents were quite strict when I was growing up, so I never, I have never been on a date before. Yeah, I would say that goes a little beyond quite strict. Uh, I would say suffocating. I still live at home. I'm studying for my master's. They are less strict now as my brother is now married, and they are now more comfortable with me dating. Well, what the fuck is their problem? Hey, dude, that's, that's like sad. You should, you know, I'm not saying go out and fucking, you know, get gang banged here, but, you know, go out and, you know, Go on a date. Experience finding love, losing it, and fucking that weird thing when you finally erase their number out of their phone. I mean, I, I can't, out of your phone, I can't believe you missed all that. Anyways, I'm studying part time and I am working for the rest of the time. How do I go about meeting new people? The people I work with are all in their mid 40s and don't really socialize outside of work. Any advice would be appreciated. All right, number one, don't fuck any of those 40 year olds. Okay, you work with them and they're old. Don't do it. Okay, God knows where the fuck those old dicks have been. Stay away from them. All right, you like a fucking one of those, you know, you know those those nerds by the uh, Star Wars action figures, and it's the big thing if the box has never been opened. Your box has never been opened. All right, it's worth a lot of money there. Um. And also, you're asking me how to meet people when I've been out of the dating scene for like 15 years. I'm 50 years old, and at no point in my life was I still living at home studying for my master's while having a job. I love that you felt enough about me that you thought at some point in my life I attained that level of success and was that pressed for time. Um, How do I go about meeting new people? Don't you guys just like go on apps, dating apps? You know what? I'm actually going to phone a friend on this one. The rest of the podcast listeners. Guys, how do you do it? Ladies. I should ask the ladies. How in this day and age could someone with a vagina, 23-year-old vagina that has not had the seal broken yet, how can they go out into the dating world, avoid the dirty dicks, and actually have a nice entry into the dating world, a positive experience that's going to make her not be jaded and think that maybe her parents were right for fucking, you know, keeping her chained to a radiator for the first quarter of century of her life. Uh, how should she go about doing it? I, I think, feel like dating apps, there's a lot of guys on there just trying to fuck, you know. And then they, there's these, no, no, that's that app. That's that app where people are just trying to hook up. This app is the more serious app. Well, what's to prevent someone to go on there and just act like they're looking for a relationship when they just want to bang you. So um, the first thing I would say, if you have the time, is you need some sort of uh, activity that you're involved in that involves you uh, socializing with, uh, you know, men and women, basically. I don't know what it is. You know, going to bars, getting hammered and shit, that's usually not going to, you're not going to meet a nice guy there for the most part. Uh, I would say, I don't know, join a softball league. (laughs) You meet a lot of women there. Um, Volleyball, what was, I mean, I'm old. Fucking start riding a dirt bike. Maybe you'll meet some guys out there on the trail. Uh, The dusty dicks. I I mean, I don't, I don't know how to, I don't know how to help you here. I'm sorry. Uh. I, I yeah, I got I got I got to phone a friend here. You guys got to help me out here. Help this lady, okay? Put on on in in the subject. Put uh, uh, what do you call? Twenty three. Fresh box, all right. Fresh box twenty three. Let's call it that. All right, and you send email me your advice, okay? And then we can fucking figure it out. Uh, we can help this lady out because, uh, you know, I have empathy for you that you're late to the game. I, I showed up late to the game. I showed up at about fucking halftime.
All right, fresh. Okay, so here we go. Here's some women helping out. Fresh box twenty three. Uh, okay, because because her vagina is fresh, has not any dirty dicks in there, and she's twenty three years old. That's right. Fresh box twenty three was in the subject. Okay. All right, clam podcast listener. All right. Uh, hey there, Bilbo Baggins. I'm a fellow clam podcast listener, responding to the twenty three year old lady. Who wrote on your uh, Monday morning podcast? Uh, don't go on them. Don't go on them dating apps. Most of them just want to bang, or they are closet gay men, or they are serial killers who still live with their moms. I also did not date until my mid twenties for the same reason, and I found that the most effective way to meet guys was to get a bunch of single girlfriends and go speed dating. You get to meet these men in the flesh and see them sweating in their shirts, awkwardly palming their sweaty drinks. Where do you go speed dating? Uh, It's funny and endearing, and you'll have a better chance getting matched to a human being. The fact that they were nervous, I would think that there's something about them that they're a better guy, you know? I can't say a better guy, but then you don't want to be all nervous when they're going out in the job world. It's a difficult, difficult thing trying to pick the right person. Anyways, other options are to join a church group that does charity work or meet a, that is a good day. You meet somebody or a a fellow studious working professional at school, but don't bang anyone at work. That's how I'm now, that's how I met my now soon to be ex-husband. Oh my God. So you just gave all of this great advice and then you have a failed relationship at the end. What is she supposed to do? I think there was some good things there. Join a church group that does charity work. Maybe not through the church if you're not into that shit. Do some charity work. But then uh, just make sure you you, you vet. Because that's also where I would think a psycho might go to try to get some, you know, you know, some open-minded slash a little naive when it comes to street smarts. Always have your guard up. Uh, oh, did I mention I saw that movie Eighth Grade? Did I tell you that? And I didn't. I didn't. I went to go see it. I didn't even know Bo Burnham directed it. I just heard it was good, and God damn it, I wanted to see a movie. And I went to go see it, and it's it's fucking great. It's great. There's one scene in there that is excruciating to watch, but I think it's important that uh, you know, like preteen teen girls see it. Uh, because it's really a, a, I don't know, it's fucking brutal. There's a lot of creeps out there, all right? But it, it doesn't get, you know, it gets creepy enough, but not to the point where you're like, I wish I never saw this fucking movie. Um, but it's, uh, you know, the way it was handled, I thought was 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 perfect. And uh, it's great to see a fucking comedian out there directing a movie that good, huh? Everybody thinks all we could do is jump around talking about our dicks. Look at that. Look at Bo Burnham crushing it. Um so go check that out. Support a fellow comedian and support cinema. Live cinema. Uh, all right. Fresh box 23. Hey, Billy Bobble Dick. <laughs> That's a great one. I friggin' love your podcast. You're truly the inner monologue in my head for almost every scenario in my life. I find myself in. I'm a 29 year old from Dorchester. Dot F, dude. Dorchester, Mass., and am a biology student in a committed relationship. My advice to this broad from England looking for love, dating apps are what I would describe as a last resort. And I believe that's something that I suggested to her. Maybe I'm just old school, but the reality is most people on dating apps are most people in real life these days. Uh, What you see on Bumble is what you see in real life. There's not really one app that's better than the other. They all house most of the douchebaggery in the world. So what's the difference? Meet people platonically is what I would suggest. Who wants a baby daddy from Tinder? All right, well, how does she do this? But hey, who am I to judge? Get some girlfriends, then they introduce you to single friends at a fucking barbecue or some shit like that. I do know some girlfriends who have met their husbands off dating sites But hey, come to think of it, their husbands seriously suck. Seriously suck. Just so many dicks on so many levels. All right. So I think dating apps is out. That's what I've learned so far. Keep on keeping on. I can't wait to see you at the garden. Oh, wait, wait. That's it? 
So what was your advice? Okay, basically, stay away from the dating apps. It seems like you, you get with a group of girlfriends. You go out in a herd. As the guys are in the tall grass, peeking up, waiting to find a weak one. And I guess somehow you, I don't know. Anyways. Um, wait, let me just read the rest of this. Keep on keeping on. I can't wait to see you at the garden in October, Bill, you redheaded stepchild. And hey, England broad, it's, it'll get easier. Just stick your tits out there. And it, it's like flies to honey. You'll quickly realize how easy it is. Um, all right. There's a lot of advice in a lot of different directions in there. But, you know, she's studying biology and she's from Dorchester. So she's getting a lot of mixed signals there. All right. Fresh Brox 23 from a lady. Dear Billy Big Tits, I just finished listening to your podcast from August 6th. And I have a few suggestions for the girl who's late to the dating game. I'm only 21, but I'm certainly not fresh out of the box. And I know a few things. Number one. Use Bumble, not Tinder. Okay, now she's saying she's saying uh, dating app. On Bumble, the girls have to message first so you can do some flirting. Oh, so you can do... Oh, not flirting. You can do some filtering out of dudes who seem creepy without feeling pressured to respond to a message. Tinder is good if you want to get laid. If you're trying to weed out the guys who just want to get their dicks wet, tell them you're saving yourself until marriage. You can always change your mind later. Uh, quote. Oh, so you just tell them you're saving yourself till marriage, and that just makes a bunch of most of the guys will just who are just looking to get laid. I guess will leave you alone. Anyways, number two, my friends love to pit me out. I'm sure if you ask yours, they would too. Three, like Bill said, find an activity. Lots of cities have sports leagues that could that could be a good place to start. To start. Thanks and go fuck yourself. I really think out of all the advice that I just read there. I would say stay away from all dating apps and I, you need to get a hobby. You need to carve out some time, some social time and like, you know, some sort of sport, charity work, um, a cooking class. Just get yourself out there where it's like, those are really good. I, I feel like there's a lot of uh, decent people in those things. Sports, you know, you could find the controlling type a dick but you know that guy else is going to crush it a lot of times in the real world so depends on if you want an in-ground pool or not i don't know what you're looking for um but there you go there's some advice for you good luck and don't settle all right don't settle the guy's being a dick fuck him there's there's you know there's going to be a good guy out there for you you don't ever have to fucking settle send it back this food's too cold